What's up guys? Welcome back to the Combat Sports Media YouTube channel. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about breaking down and giving out a prediction for the upcoming Saul Canelo Alvarez vs Triple G Trilogy fight. Uh, as many of you guys know, this fight will take place in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Center uh, on September 17th, I believe. Uh, it will be on the zone. Um, now, let's start with, you know what, let's just start with the history between these two fighters. I mean, the first fight was a, a very competitive and close fight, much like the second fight. Uh, the first fight ended in a draw in which I believe, um, you know, it was a fight that could have gone either way. Um, I don't think it was the robbery that many people painted out to be. Um, I personally didn't have a problem with the decision, uh, but I also don't have a problem with uh, people having one or the other winning that fight as well. Now the second fight, I actually believe it or not, think that Triple G won. Um, I think he jabbed the shit out of uh, Canelo. Uh, he was he was he, he was a fight in which he used his boxing skills. Now, many people uh, were probably not expecting Triple G to fight in that manner, uh, but. He, he did a lot of circling and a lot of jabbing. And in my opinion, like I said, he should have deserved, he, he should have came out with the decision win. Um, he realized he wasn't fast enough to exchange with Canelo up close. Uh, so he decided to give himself a little more space between him and Canelo and he started circling and utilizing the jab and boxing. Uh, again, we look at Triple G as a brute power puncher. We weren't expecting him to win in that fashion. Um, if he was to win, we would probably expect by knockout or what have you. However, again, he reminded all of us uh, that yes, he is the silver medalist uh, Olympian and yes he is a boxer first uh, who just happens to be gifted physically uh, and, and, and have uh, awesome power when he started training when he came over to America and started training with Abel Sanchez consistently uh, I believe Abel worked on uh, just getting just basically taking advantage of his physical attributes and getting the most out of his power. And so a lot of times when you look at training footage with Abel Sanchez and Triple G, it's stuff like, you know, uh, just throwing the same punch over and over again at the he heavy bag uh, with full power and just perfecting it and just landing it right on the knuckles. With, full, with, with perfect technique and full force uh, over and over and over again. He, he could throw the same punch at the heavy bag. Let's say, you know, he'll throw like 55 left hooks in a row at the punching bag. And then he'll switch over to the right hand and throw 55 powerful right hands with full force in a row without stopping. And then he'll switch over to, you know, another punch and then, you know, so, it, it was really that kind of training. It was, um, uh, but, uh, and, and, and you know, a lot of people did forget that, hey, this is, this guy is an Olympian. This guy does have boxing skills. Um, and, and we were all reminded of that in the, in the rematch, despite what you may have thought of the outcome. You know, uh, I, I am well aware that a lot of people do give that fight to Canelo as well, but at the end of the day, both fights were extremely competitive and were conducted and fought at a very high level. <clears throat> now Canelo, he's coming off of that 
Bevo loss. And look, before I go any further, you know, I th actually, let's just finish with Bevo. Bevo, the weight class had nothing to do with that loss. Canelo lost because style-wise, it's just not a good style matchup for him. If Bevo was a super middleweight, the result would have been the same. Um, now, Canelo is an awesome fighter, but in my opinion, he should have a few losses on his record that he actually doesn't have. Which means, in my opinion, he's, got, he, 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 he's gotten a few gifts. Um, a lot of times when he steps up to the elite level, he, he has a hard time separating himself. Actually, every single time he steps up to the elite level, he either loses or uh, comes away with a controversial victory. Uh, I'm not hating. Uh, this is just a, a fact. You know, think about it. Every time he's faced elite opposition, he's either lost or he uh, has come away with a controversial victory. Um, so that's what I don't like about Canelo is, uh, you know, people like to call him a pound for pound fighter, which, you know, he is, he, he should be on the pound for pound list, but all this pound for pound king stuff, I was never a fan of that talk, uh, mainly because I always believed he should have a few losses on his record that he actually doesn't have. Um, you know, the Triple G fight. The rematch being one of them. Uh, but however, like I said, awesome fighter. Um, he just, uh, I just wish he didn't get the help on the scorecards that he usually gets. And he's not the kind of fighter that's willing to die in that ring in order to get a victory. And he's certainly not going to take a punch to land his own punch. He's not that kind of fighter. He's not. He's not going to lay his heart out on the line. Um, I mean, let's be real. If he was that kind of fighter, why would he play chess with the chess master and Floyd Mayweather? Um, I'm sure he didn't do that because he was dumb enough. He was too dumb to figure out that hmm, the strategy is not the right strategy to fight this guy. No, he knew he was the wrong strategy. He just didn't have the heart to lay out on the line like Marcus Maidana. He didn't have the heart to use his physicality, make it a messy fight, and throw some fucking punches and bunches and try to beat the fucking shit out of this guy. He was comfortable in uh, just, you know, losing a wide unanimous decision, trying to outbox the uh, boxing master in Floyd Mayweather. Uh, in his fight with Bivol many years later, same thing, uh, he was losing, it was clear that he had no other shot at winning the fight unless if he was willing to sell out and try to land something big. And you know, he wasn't willing to uh, come forward and maybe take a punch or two to land his. Uh, he wasn't willing to uh, uh, just uh, lay out on the line. And you know what, that's cool, uh, but I don't have to respect it and I don't have to like it. Uh, that's why uh, he will never be one of my favorite fighters. Um, now Triple G, he's different. Uh, not only does he have the skills that pay the bills, but when he has to, he is willing to take a punch in order to land uh, uh, the kind of punch that he really wants. And he's really he's willing to put his health out on the line when he be to get shit done. Uh, when it's go time, it's go time. Keith Thurman alluded to that in his recent interview with Brian Custer. So, um, you know, that, that's what Triple G's got that, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, so, you know, bo and another thing, style-wise, Canelo, after he lost to Floyd, uh, fought, um, tried to f take uh, some things from Floyd Mayweather, like, the elusiveness and the upper body movement and stuff like that. But after he fought Golovkin, now he adopted a more similar style to Golovkin's, which is like that coming forward pressure, steady, slow but steady pressure style. Um, 
uh, and, and just usually one hard punch at a time, you know. Uh, and he's throwing less combinations. You know, I remember when Canelo first came out, if you guys remember back in 2011 on HBO and 2012 on HBO, what do you remember, what stuck out to you most about him? It was the combinations. It was his punch selection. What happened to that? That's not there anymore. He's more of a one punch guy right now and he's trying to be a more of a power puncher than he was back in the day in 2011 when he was fighting at 54. Uh, but I kind of want to see some of that come back. I doubt it will. Uh, I, I also believe some of it has to do with age as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. And as far as Golovkin is concerned, this guy is old as shit. Uh, he's as old as dirt. Uh, and he has a lot of wear and tear. He's been boxing at a high level for a very, very long time. He's had a very long career in the amateur and now as a pro. And what's been evident to me is he can't, he, his punch resistance to the body is, is, is not good. Uh, and just because you don't go down from it, that doesn't mean I don't see that there's a weakness. And that doesn't mean there's not a weakness, you know. Uh, he's tough as shit. Uh, he, he's good at, he's a true professional. He's good at hiding pain. Uh, he's good at battling through adversity. But believe me, he's having problems with taking body shots. And maybe Canelo will finally be able to take advantage of uh, that weakness in this third fight uh, and also Canelo will also be more comfortable than ever going into this fight because he's already fought the guy two times and he's already seen the best of him he's, it's not like Golovkin is going to get any better he's only getting worse and worse each and, with each and every day that passes now let's move on to the prediction as you guys could probably tell you know oh by the way you guys are probably most people are probably a lot more excited about this fight than I am. Uh, this was an easy pick for me to make. Uh, I'm going with uh, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, uh, I, I think Canelo is going to either win by uh, a, a mid to late round stoppage. Don't be surprised if it starts from a body shot or is from a body shot. Or a clear unanimous decision win. Uh, I don't expect any controversy when it comes to the outcome of this fight, unlike their previous two. Um, well, there you have it, folks. Uh, before I let you guys go, I would just like to say thank you uh, to ITR Boxing and Luki for uh, all the support and uh, the shout outs, and also uh, G Funky Boxing. Um, you know, I don't, my relationship with him uh, isn't anywhere near as strong uh, as it is with uh, Luki. I've never spoken to G Funky off the air, but nevertheless, uh, cool guy, he's always showing me love. Just wanted to shout him out. And even if I had no rela uh, uh, relationships or wasn't, uh, uh, I never got shout outs from these guys, I would still recommend every boxing fan to check those two channels out. And what I like most about those two channels in ITR Boxing uh, and G Funky is they talk boxing. Uh, they don't go too much uh, into the business stuff and they only talk about fights that are actually going to happen for the most part. What a fucking concept, right? For those of you that have been following me for a while already realize and know that no, we only talk about fights that are actually going to happen. We don't talk about fights that we wish what have happened or hope that are going to happen or what fighter needs to get paid or whatever. We don't talk about bullshit, man. We just talk about fights that are signed uh, because we don't have time to dick around. Well, there you have it, folks. Please subscribe if you already haven't done so. More content is coming your way. Thank you very much once again.